All right. Hello, uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Alex. I work for WQC and I will try to to expose you some some stuff I, I discovered you know, for the for the past year working on a, on a project at WQC called Fedorite with this guy. Um, basically we, we do a lot with uh, DSLs for the semantic web and um, and uh, we are trying to, to do some transformation from uh, SQL to RDF yeah, okay. uh, that kind of stuff. So we had to deal with parsers and stuff like that. And everything is in Scala. It's, it's uh, open, open source, and you can uh, I can give you the, the, the URL for that. Uh, but today, I, actually, I wanted to speak about that. But uh, two days ago, I decided that it was maybe a bit too much in speaking about uh, Scala features uh, to write DSLs and semantic web technology, I think it was a bit too much. Uh, so uh, I will just focus on, on one very simple example and we'll try to, uh, to play with that. Um, so can you see that? Actually, I, found, uh, I just found that on Twitter <laughs> a few days ago. And uh, that was really cool. <laughs> and, uh, <Start. laughs> if, if, you, if you can show why it's another program and you solve their problem for a day, what then the DSL, they can solve their own damn problem. <laughs> and I think in a way it's true. So a lot of people, you know, uh, even at WCC, we have a lot of gigs. And uh, basically when I speak about Scala, uh, they don't give a shit. And they, they, don't, they don't all understand or they don't want to understand. They, they don't want to spend time on it. Uh, but when I show them, oh, you know, you can write an RDF graph and it looks like a, like a graph and uh, you don't lose anything uh, with the types and everything makes sense, you know, for them, they don't have to think, you know, about Scala itself, they understand what you are doing, they, they say, oh, I just have to copy paste some, some stuff and, and it just works. And it's really that, actually, and we are trying to do that. Um, but if we, so first, have we try to define uh, a bit more uh, what we can, you know, what it means. I mean, uh, DSA, uh, and uh, when it will be done, we will try to dig with that. So basically, I just I just received this book. I don't know if you if you heard of that. So uh, it was published only uh, a few weeks ago. I think I, I'm the, I'm among the first one who received that. I received that on Monday, um, and that's I try to follow that. For I mean, the first chapter will be the would be my, my introduction, and uh, so I, I just saw some some parts, and um, uh, so that's really interesting, and I will come back to that several times. So, if we try to, to explain what a DSL is, uh, basically the first thing you want to say is this is not uh, a main programming language. So there is actually this is the, the only distinction that, that you can do. Uh, it doesn't have to be Turing complete. Uh, this is very specific to, to one domain, so basically you, you restrict your, uh, your domain and you, you say, okay, we just work with that, nothing else, so uh, maybe I, I just want, I, I just want to, to forget a lot of features from, from Scala, maybe I, I will take just a few of them, um, I will try to, to keep the, the simple things. Um, but when you do that, uh, I mean, you still have the, you know, the world language, Oh, so yes. Did you ever say what DSL was? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so DSL means domain-specific language. So it's really that you have a language, you have the domain that you choose, and you will try to target this domain. Uh, but when you do that, I mean, don't forget that there is you know, a language. So you have to come up with uh, with uh, a syntax, some kind of semantics, uh, maybe your, you know some kind of runtime. Uh, you want to to interpret uh, your your stuff. Um, so you have to think about that, and, um, and it's not always uh, very easy. Um, so you will try to give to the user, you know, the you know as much as abstraction, you know, as you can do, uh, and uh, you have to be very specific about that. Um, okay, so here we have some uh, some very famous examples actually in the Scala community. You may not know all of them. Um, so this is actually pure Scala. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to believe. And uh, this guy just wrote, uh, uh, 
uh, a lunar lander in, uh, you know, uh, using this language, and uh, that's, that's really awesome, actually. And, uh, and, uh, and it works very well, you can just go to the... So uh, I, I'm giving the links, so you can just uh, follow that and, and read the article about that. Uh, maybe a more famous one is Query. Um, so just an abstraction uh, on, on top of uh, SQL databases, where you can just describe your, your tables, uh, you say, okay, I have this, this schema, and then uh, you have this, um, uh, this very fancy uh, you know, calls, and it relies a lot on uh, higher, higher order functions, so hopefully you, know, you, you understand them very, very well. Um, so, so actually today I, I choose not focusing on, uh, on uh, higher, higher order functions you know, to, write, uh, uh, to write DSLs because of the talk before, but actually they are used everywhere because uh, it makes a lot of sense when you want to, when you want to give some abstractions at one point you want to deal with functions and uh, there is no way to, to get around that. Uh, one example that I like uh, a lot and actually uh, I use it in my project um, this is really how you know instead of using the Survey API you can just use that and I think it's really easy to understand there is nothing really to configure you just uh, uh, one line in your web XML and, uh, and that's it. You just just write that and you can actually extract the parameters, you have access to, to some objects, very, very cool objects, and it works very well. And um, so something to consider. And today we will use the Scala test framework. This is just um, a test framework, <coughs> write test in Scala. Uh, there are actually a couple of uh, test frameworks like that. Um, I don't really have an opinion on you know, which one is better. I just showed this one. I don't, I don't really know why. Uh, I, I use it for. Uh, I've been using that for 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 more than a year now. Um, so speaking about resources, so you saw the the group DSLs in action. Actually, um, I will explain, but uh, there there is some kind of cheating there. Uh, if you want to write DSLs, actually, you know there is some kind of buzzword. This is, this is mostly about writing APIs, so you just want to, to read this book and, and uh, <laughs> by yourself you will understand how you can, how we can do that. And actually, uh, maybe this presentation from, uh, I don't know if you, if you know that guy from Google, uh, he made a very good talk on uh, how to write a good API, and even if there is, you know, I don't think that the word uh, DSL is mentioned in, the, in it, but actually it's all about DSS and DSLs and how to write good uh, APIs and so this is why I put that in this, um, uh, in this slide. Um, there is actually something that I really like in the in a Debussy's book, uh, book. I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, in the in the first uh, chapter, there is a very good introduction on classifying uh, DSLs. Uh, that's really interesting uh, because the purpose of the book actually uh, he takes one example and and then he will try to s to solve exactly this more or less the same problem uh, in, uh, in uh, different paradigms, uh, Ruby, um, Ruby, and uh, Scala, and Clojure, and another one. And, uh, and, so, and to do that, he, he has to explain you know, what are the, the different DSLs. And this is where, where he said, OK, Scala is there. And, um, and effectively, you can't really find Scala in the other configurations. Actually, I would put, uh, okay, you can put it in the Spark API. Um, you can do some kind of syntax tree manipulation in, uh, in Scala. I started to play with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to, to write uh, compiler plugins, and uh, you can do very interesting stuff. Uh, actually, I will need that in, a, in the next month. Um, and it's very powerful, very easy, and so it's not really Scala the language, but you have a, a hook in the compiler, and you can do it. Very interesting stuff. And you see that you have the first, uh, the first, um, the first function. This is between embedded and uh, no, so sorry. You have the internet DSL, okay. And uh, I will, I will talk about the, the other kind later. And the generative part, basically, we we won't speak about that because in Scala we are, uh, you know, we are statically typed, so we can do this kind of stuff uh, at one time. Uh, you can, but this is not really part of Scala, and uh, you won't uh, you will play with the right code of the JDM. So this is not <coughs> we are not really interested by that. Um, so
So this is part of the, the internal GSL family. Uh, so that means you have a host language. So in our case, it would be Scala. Um, you want to use actually the features from Scala. Uh, and basically, what we do, we just write an API as fluent as possible. Um, and you have the right to use uh, Scala features, for example, higher order functions. And uh, in, your in our case, we have to deal with types all the time. <coughs> and we can't get around that. Um, and by opposition, if you don't really, if your language doesn't have, you can't really uh, rely on Scala, uh, I mean on a, on a host language, in that case, you, you will have to just write a parser and do some kind of stuff with that. It will be, of course, a lot more difficult. You will have to, I mean, uh, you need some skills to write uh, grammars, to, to parse them, uh, to define a, a clean semantics. And, uh, um, it can be difficult for, for performance reasons. I mean, uh, you have, a, you know, it comes with a lot of problems. Of course, it's, a, it's more powerful, but you can end up writing, you know, a very <coughs> difficult language. Most of the time, it won't be that difficult because you don't want to be Turing complete. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so it should be okay. Um, so clearly it can be interesting because all of, all of that stuff, why do we do that? We want to be uh, as expressive as possible so we can focus on, on the domain. Um, concision is really important. Uh, so basically we don't have to think about the, you know, the host language and uh, it will work. The abstraction of the product, uh, the abstraction will give you, you know, more produ productivity, but it can be very hard, um, and um, you, you you need some tooling also. So I told you, you know, DSLs and uh, API, API, what was the difference? And actually, uh, this is mentioned in the in the book I have there. So page 189, and this is really interesting. Frankly <coughs> speaking, there is not much of a difference. So you are just in the middle of the book, and the guy is telling you, yeah, you know what, it's called DSL, but we are just dealing with API. And uh, so I think this is just a buzz in a way. <laughs> so that's why today we just focus on uh, you know, the Scala features to help you write in freehand APIs. Uh, this is my, my subtitle. Um, so we do that. Uh, if I have time, I will speak about combinators for polyton language. Uh, combinators is just a way to, so basically this is a parser, but you stay in Scala. So this is a library instead of using Lex or Yak, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you have the equivalent in Java, and uh, but we don't want to use that. We want to, to stay in Scala to write our parser, and um, uh, and that's that's really interesting to do that. <laughs> uh, I would I would like to speak about integration and modul modularity. Basically, you have several DSLs and you want to combine them. Um, actually, uh, Runar spoke very quickly, uh, not specifically on, uh, about that, but uh, you know, when you write types and you want to inject some types and things like that, uh, basically this, you know, that dish with that. And uh, we definitely don't speak about the you know, performance issue and uh, how you deal with exceptions. And I think that there is actually an entire ch chapter uh, about that in the, in the book. So just have to buy it.